Hey everybody, it's go time. Another Chess Rivals, another newcomer to the Chess Rivals platform today, International Master Thomas Rendell. You know him from Hack Attack on Chess Monday, Chess TVs. I know him because of his accent and the fact that he's pretty adorable when he wears that black chess.com polo all the time. But I'm going to close out of observing these games and send, uh, send Thomas a uh, challenge and we are going to get going here. We're playing a best of seven. 3-0 Blitz. That is uh, what Thomas wanted to do for his first ever Chess Rivals experience, and we're off. I'm using a new mouse, by the way, for those of you who will wonder, where is that obnoxious clicking gun? It, uh, it went bye-bye. That said, I'm a little bit, un, uh, little bit uncomfortable with this new mouse, I'm going to be totally honest, because it you know, whenever you get a new mouse, you got to work out the kinks. It's kind of like a new relationship. You know, you got to you got to figure out the other person's likes and dislikes, you know, not show the real horrible dark sides that you have, you know, not show not show really what a uh, terrible person you are, at least not till like six months into the day. Then you start revealing the dark side of your personality. Uh, all right, he plays e4. Now, Thomas plays a lot of, there's a reason why he has a show called Hack Attack, because Tom loves to attack. He plays the birds. We all know this opening sucks, but am I going to be able to put my money where my mouth is? We'll find out, right? Um... If takes, takes, takes on d1, he takes with the rook, I get nothing. I'd like to play e5, and if knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes, move the knight, he wins d5. It's not going to work out so well, but what I will do is I'll take and then play e5 next immediately. The whole point is, is you want to break on the dark squares as a means to kind of expose what could be white's biggest potential weaknesses. You get it, I get it, we all get it. He's going to go for it, I'm going to go for it. Yeah, and this is uh, this is just fine. It's just fine for everybody. Everybody's happy here. Uh, he would have liked to have maybe played bishop to g5, but he couldn't because I would take a three with check. Now I kind of like the pressure I'm getting. But I have to remember this is 3-0, and so having a new mouse here makes me a little nervous. Right? <sighs> Got to get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get the stretch out. Get your stretch on. Believe it or not, yeah, I stretch before blitz chess. <sighs> All right. So should I consider f5 in some positions, opening the f-file to increase pressure on f3? Not anymore, because he put the queen on that diagonal, clearly. I'm going to call his bluff. Can he really take that c-pawn? That seems, the or sorry, the b-pawn? It seems unlikely. Maybe I'm not going to call his bluff, actually. We'll go for this if he wants to trade. I felt like maybe c4, queen b7, queen a6, rook b8, that maybe that would have been fine for me, but... Uh, but no, so he moves there. I'm going to play c4 now. And what I'd like to do is put my pony into d3. He, does, he doesn't want to let me do that. Um, so should I prepare a6 and b5? If he trades everything, does that even do anything for him? I don't think it does. I mean, if he wants to take everything, then fine. I, uh, I have enough defenders. I'm still going to get the bishop here at the end of that big old trade. His knight on d5 is a very strong piece, and if he plays rook to d1, I have to calculate the tactics. b5, he moves, and then maybe I can put my knight on d3. That outpost square is calling my name. Plus, if I get d3, that might open chances on the dark squares to get toward white's king side. Possibly. Maybe. I don't know. Call me, maybe. Uh, one of the things you have to be careful about in this kind of position is you don't want to overvalue an outpost square just because it's really far extended into your opponent's position if you don't have uh, threats once you get the piece on that square or if you don't have help coming so to speak sometimes people look at those positional weaknesses and get almost too excited when if you put the knight on d3 if you don't have any concrete improvements then maybe he can undermine the knight it's, it's just it's not going to be a hundred percent clear how good that is for me but i i am going to go for it he, he wants to play 97 check but i just don't believe it so I'm going to put that knight on d3. Trust that my plan of attack is was well calculated. This feels okay for me, right? I still just don't really... I mean, he's going to what? He's going to play knight to c7 and win the exchange? I guess so. But it seems really dangerous for him. By the way, can I play b4 here? That's a strange move. Because it blocks off the communication. I like it. I'm going for it. Blocks off the communication between the queen and bishop. And so if he has to take with the bishop... I can take with the knight. If he takes with the knight, I have queen b6 check. If he takes with the pawn, I have bishop takes b2. I really like that move I just found before. 
Now I've removed his knight. He has to do something about uh, the tactics. He's going to go for this, but we all know how that works out, right? That's a Venus flytrap if you've ever seen one. Okay, now, now can I sack my queen takes, bishop takes with check? If I had a rook on the d-file, that would just be game over. But I don't have a rook on the d-file, so I can't just sack my queen. Unfortunately. Always a bummer when you can't sack your queen, you know? A little part of me dies inside whenever I can't sack my queen. I should probably just go take that e4 pawn, huh? But should I take there first and then take it? Maybe. I'm going to put the rook on d8. Kind of uh, the slow playing the position a little bit. Not a lot of time here, but I still think... Um, now I'll... Oh, now I'll be careful because, I, for, again, as I said, there's not a lot of time here. I need to speed up. I need to speed up. Uh, what to do here? Huh. I'm, I'm losing the position slowly. I'm uh, completely fumbling this away this position right now. I'm in the process of losing the whole position. Ooh, what? Uh, am I getting mated? He lost on time. That was a horrible, horrible turn of events. I feel terrible about that. He should have drawn. Actually, he had me mated here. 96 was mate. He missed mate and won. So I can't feel too bad. Uh, but what did I do wrong there? I mean, I just like crumpled, right? I win the exchange and the game is over. Honestly, you know, Rook D8 was a horrible move. That's, that's a really good lesson. You can't let yourself play warm and cozy moves because you don't want to calculate tactics. Queen takes E4 is just crushing. It eliminates the outpost square for the knight, and uh, there's no concrete discoveries for him. I mean, even, even if he moves the knight to try to win material, he can't take a8. So, um, so that, was, uh, that was a mistake of, of uh, what, what is it called? It's a mistake of um, omission instead of commission. You just, you, just, you just don't go for what you kind of know to be best in the position, and you know you get your you, you get what you uh, deserve. You get your your karma for that, right? Chess karma, because concrete calculation is the way you figure out every position. You rely on your strategical knowledge and your positional feel and your overall experience, of course. But and I talk a lot about positional chess because I think it's beneficial to most of the members that watch my uh, material. You know, thinking about the pawn structure and stuff, but. But the bottom line is, if you're not calculating concretely, you're missing opportunities for both you and your opponent, and, and um, it's lazy man's chess. And that's what I did. I played lazy man's chess there, and I almost got punished for it. I deserved to lose that game. But all's well that ends well right now. I'm going to keep, uh, keep on trucking. I'm going to keep on trucking here without getting too judgmental on myself about that. Obviously, I've, I've also lost games that I deserve to win. It happens, but still, I'm not happy with how, I, with how I handled that time scramble there. All right, what we have here is a French. I'd like to use the E5 square. That's an understatement. Um, I'd also like to use the F4 square here. I'm going to go for this. And then kick the knight. Because I don't think putting it on any, either one of these squares is a good idea. I think he should back up. And if I'm right, then that allows me to then refocus my efforts on the e-file. I was going to play like rookie one. Um, yeah, I don't think he had anything. So I'm going to play rookie one and try to refocus my efforts on the... Uh, positional weaknesses in my opponent's camp. Taking is, I don't know, it's kind of kind of a, a concession. I don't like that I improved the e6 square, but I was having trouble thinking of a way to coordinate the knights. Oh, I should have played knight c1, knight d3, and into e5. Knight c1, knight d3, and into e5. Okay, that may, but he had bishop e8, bishop h5 coming. It's not exactly clear what the best approach was, and I still do have pressure on the weak e6 pawn, so I still have that going for me. 
that is a plus. With the queen on b3, I'm not really threatening much, but my goal was that I, I'm stopping e5 because d5 hangs with check. So now I'm going to double rooks. Potentially, I will free my back rank. Prophylaxis, right? Uh-huh. That is a, 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 an understandable decision by my opponent there, bringing the knight into c4. I'm going to kick him out, right? I'm not going to let him stay there. That is faux show. Bo Fasho, a born Bostonian, Aryan librarian of the word Smithsonian. Give it continuity. He can't just sack on f3 right away. He's got to back up. And now I'm going to go for the knight coming into g4. Oh. I'd love to have something spectacular here. I'm going to put the queen on c2, kind of a slow approach, putting the queen on a useful diagonal. Now I'm going to bring in this knight. It's a little bit tricky, right? He's got to be a little nervous about his queen, and he's going to back up because of it, even though I don't actually see anything concrete for me. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I don't, I don't see much going on here on a concrete level. Oh, wow, he's going for it. He says there's no time to lose. No time like the present. Is he going to play e5 and just go for it? He is. This is why he's the hack attack master. If I take and he takes with the knight, though, he's really doubling up a lot of his stuff, right? And what does he have? I don't know. He's got isolated double pawns. I'll tell you what, that's what he has. And if I can trade, so now I can get my king off, right? And avoid tactics on h3. If I can simplify this position, I have a big positional edge. Uh-oh. I didn't see that. Okay, that's, uh, that's less than ideal for me. Less than ideal. Less than ideal for this guy. But okay, maybe he just blundered. Maybe he did. Uh, he's still holding on, though. He's threatening G2 and, uh, and everything else, and I can't stop it, right? So we go for this horrible sequence. We make a pre-move, guessing that that's what he was going to do. And we resign. Down on time and down in the position. So sorry about that, wifey, coming to say hi. But as usual, I'm working, just being a workaholic. So, all right, good game by Tom. Honestly, he built up the attack well. I think he had a little bit more experience in that type of French than I did. This is uh, a structure I don't play very often, and I, I don't like the way I opened up so quickly. I was still sort of uh, feeling bad about the previous game. I need to pay a little more attention to his French next time. Here we go. What's he got now? I know he's got, you know, gambits galore and craziness galore. It's his middle name, right? Going for going for English English uh, gambits. And I know that sounds like a little like a stereotype, but it's kind of true. You know, Tom, uh, Tom likes himself certain types of games with lots of attacking chances and type of opening. Kind of like Simon Williams, you know. And it is. It's an English thing. Um, actually, I'm English, right? Tom. Tom Rendell. If you mix around the letters in Tom Rendell's name, it spells Voldemort. Fun fact. Fun fact. I'm not thrilled with the positional disaster that is my situation here, but, but okay. The game is going on. I need to improve something quickly, right? Perhaps I need to try to strike out with f5 at some point. Castling can't be a good idea, can it? Can't be a good idea. 
But there are many good ideas in this position, honestly. How did this get so bad? I don't know. I'm going to keep my king in the center, though, and see if I can play quickly enough to, uh, to, make, to leave it as a mess long enough to get us under time pressure, because I just, I think this is a bad position. Sometimes now I'm just kind of committing to some passively ugly moves. Passive and ugly. I'm lacking a plan, which is never fun. So probably what I need to do is try to find a way to uh, to break with g5. It's like my only way to kind of improve on this scenario, I think. Something like this. Maybe I get rook f5 next. A little bit of a tricky poo. If he takes it, I take with the bishop. Hmm. Now I almost have knight g6, right? I don't quite know what to do, so I'm just going to play like a passive move with the rook. I wasn't sure about rook g4, wasn't sure about rook f5. They both kind of confused me, to be honest. I'd like to play knight there. He's going to play f3. Are we worried about the c5 pawn hanging? Really? Doesn't seem like we really should be. Just because our position is so bad, I don't know that we can afford to. Not a bad idea. Yeah, I'm getting crushed here. This is a bad, bad game. Bad game three. Gotta be honest. Um... um Time pressure is nearing. Scary. Scary for everyone. Just doing my best to hold on to a bad position right now. Without letting it get too out of control. I think I I gotta go for this pawn now. Go for this, I guess. The key was if you played knight 6 I could actually take with the queen. I thought about that before, but it still seems too dangerous, just like this seems too dangerous. So I'm still not thrilled about it. My king is just... How, what to do here? I have to run away, but where to run? Right? I have nothing to do here. I'm just dead. Mm -hmm. Expected. Yeah, I'm just getting absolutely crushed. This is just horrible. All right, we got to we got to play again. We got to rub it off, or sorry, not rub it off. <laughs> that sounded weird. We got to go Taylor Swift on this. No one goes T Swift like me after a loss because I shake it off. I shake it off. Ooh, -hoo. right. Because the haters gonna hate, 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 hate it. And the player's gonna play, 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 play. I'm just gonna shake, 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 shake. Shake it off. I shake it off. Ooh, ooh. Shake it off. Shake it off. Chess player's gonna play, 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 play. And the haters gonna mate, 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 mate. I'm gonna check, 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 mate. Check, mate. Checkmate Tom. Ooh. -hoo. Yeah. 
Interesting. Just goes right in there, huh? Says he doesn't care. Trying to protect that knight because it's a little bit awkward there. And now I'm going to play f3 if I get a chance. Yeah, let's kick that knight out of here. Go grab that pawn. Are we worried about him taking on b5? If so, we should just take here. But I don't really know that we're worried about it, right? He's giving up the light square bishop. Might as well. Might as well just take it, though. Because that knight on b5 is actually really irritating for him because it keeps this knight out of play. So I think he's going to play knight h5, and I can play bishop to e5. I have a pretty clear plan. I can play queen e2 and try to strike with e4 at some point. And his, uh, his queen side is a little more than just dysfunctional, right? So now what? Do we want to play e4 or just take? Uh, e4 seems to make more sense. E4 seems to make more sense right now. He's playing quickly, which is what he should be doing, anticipating that not a great situation for him. I want a better I want more of a clear plan, honestly, than I have. I don't know what the clear plan is. So I'm going to try to maybe play for b3 as well. If he lets me, at g6, I might just take, 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 take with check, knight to g7, right? Got three pawns for the piece and an attack, maybe. I have knight to d6 coming in some of those positions. <coughs> so, okay. Ah, he goes for it. So takes, takes, takes g6, takes, takes with the queen. He plays knight to g7. I play knight to d6. The problem is, where's the follow-up, right? So let's not call his bluff. b3 is slightly risky because it creates this backward c3 pawn if he takes it, but it also opens up the light squares. Feels like the thing I need to do to Im improve upon uh, my chances, right? Seems like... Seems like the bishop pair, the light square bishop, is only going to get into play in this kind of in this kind of way. Just open it up, right? It's a very it's a very precarious position for that black king if my diagonals get open, right? Oh, for sure. Just take it. Discover checks coming all over the place, right? Things like this. I'm going to take I'm going to take the material. And I'm going to try to bring my rook to the C file. I'd love to play rook to c7 next move, but it doesn't seem to work just yet because his knight is guarding it. But okay, this is a pretty tough one for him right now. Maybe even just offer the simplification. The end game should also be okay for me. Okay, he, he knows he doesn't want that. All right, understood. Rook to c7 or knight to c7? Oh, 15 seconds. I totally forgot about my time.
Oh, look at that. A legendary bullet scramble. That was like, how do you like your bullet? How do you like your scrambled eggs? With a side of crazy bullet chess. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. That was crazy. I mean, nobody's happy about how that game ended. I was totally winning, but I just completely forgot about my time, right? All of a sudden, I'm like, 15 seconds. Wake up, Danny. That was scary. So, all right, well, uh, we'll take it because you know what? It, as I said, it was a, it was a, you know, steak and steak and eggs. How do you like your eggs? Scrambled, crazy bullet chest scrambled. I don't know that that's the best line for Black if he just plays the takes f6 and plays positional, but okay. Was kind of kind of calling his bluff a little bit. I didn't think he would want to play that way. He wants his wants his Tory London position, as you can see here. He wants his chances to attack on the king side. I know you, Tom, and I'm going to avoid that little Tory attack by trying to control the dark squares as I am here. play this way with the two rooks here you see because I'm setting up the structure so that I can move this knight and play for f5. I'm preparing to uh, to play knight h5, knight f4. Uh, let's move the king first, unpin the f-pawn. Possibly the reason would be that if I have an eye on the e-pawn it makes him harder for him to move his knight because I win that pawn. So I'm not sure about bishop a2. I like my chances here, right? Like it a lot. Ooh. I might have had the idea of playing h6 there. Bishop back. b5 prepares to play c4 and close out the bishop, but it also denies the knight c4, e3, d5. One of the positional things you have to be aware of if you ever have this structure of e5 and c5 is that the d5 square is open and available. So there you go. There's your pro tip. I'm just going to go ahead and play c4. Now, do I want to go for f5? That that would be the uh, that would be the hey. I think I'm just better here. I think I think I'm just better here. I'm going I'm going Komodo on this. Komodo always thinks he's better, right? What an ego, Komodo dragon! You have such a big ego just because you think you're the best chess player in the world. It's like whatever, Komodo. <sighs> whatever. All right, but I like this. I like the the rooks are coordinated well. It feels like I planned this whole thing from the start when I put the rooks there, right? And we know that I rarely plan on anything that I didn't just think of five seconds before. So that's on it. That's a sign of good things to come. I like it. F four is coming. <coughs> F four is coming. F four is coming. I like it. Do I want to play F four and E four? Just blow it open. The biggest advantage I have here is is on time for sure, right? He's taking a lot of time, so it almost makes me just want to sit on this position a little bit. Oh, bishop c6 and queen b7 was also an idea. Get the battery on the diagonal, but here I have threats of knight f4, and he walks right into it. I'm going to go after those dark squares. He's not threatening anything, though, so maybe I should build up on it. Uh, no, I'm just going to go get the dark square bishop, I think. I think I'm just going to go get the dark square bishop. Have to be careful. Yeah, he has the open file. I know. I know. I'd like to play f4 here, though. It's, it's all out now. If I can take g3 with check and get the rook, bishop, and queen lined up on f3, I'm going to win. If I've somehow miscalculated this, f4 is probably a losing move. If takes, takes, queen e8, rook e8, rook e8, queen e8, he takes b7, I got, I got the queen there. That should be enough. I feel like f4 was well-timed. If he takes with the pawn, and I take, though, he can then actually move the queen. Oh, no, he can't, because I would get f3. So, yeah, I don't think that worked out well for him, honestly. Now I have this move. Okay. So he resigned. Yeah, it was over. I think, uh, what was the move? Bishop h6 might have even been mate soon. Okay. All right, well, here we go, right? 
Last but not least, if I can win, I win our best of seven. Oh, yeah, the Staunton Gambit. Now who's going hack attack, right? You say hack, I say tomato. You say tomato, I say sack the F-pawn. I love this line. I love this gambit against the, against the Dutch. It's one of my favorite things to do. One of my favorite openings to play. I don't even care if I'm worse after move 10. I don't. It's still my favorite. Right? This is one of the few crazy gambits I play less. I used to play a lot more wild stuff, rely on my tactical wit, dynamic chess positions, but I, I feel like I've matured. Somewhat. They're like, yeah, right, Danny, you just started playing the Verisoft. Okay, touche, touche. All right, now what? There's interesting ideas here, including takes, takes, bishop b5, pawn takes, knight takes. Uh, also, just bishop to c4. He can't play c5, right? Because if he does, I have knight to b5. Vinning on this spot, yeah? So we develop the bishop. Now he has to be careful that that queenie poo doesn't get trapped. She might get trapped if he's not careful. I'm threatening knight a4, right? Things are going to get weird. Things are going to get weird. He can play queen to b5, though. And after c4, queen a6, I have nothing concrete. I'm going to go for that anyway. Queen b5, c4, queen a6. And I was thinking I might even just play like c5. And just go all out. Go there. I'd like to play c5. Problem is he castles long, and what am I actually threatening? I don't know. This is this is a lot of pressure, but pressure means nothing. It's not the pressure that counts, but how you use it, right? If c5 castles long. The problem I have is I don't see any kind of concrete threat for me, and I don't like that. Should I play just the knight back to c3 to open up the bishop to the a4 square? I kind of like that little tricky idea. In some positions, he's going to want to liquidate the tension here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have the bishop shooting to a4 at some point. Ooh. He's going to go to g7, huh? Now I'm going to play c5. Crazy, crazy talk. Crazy town, crazy talk. Take here. We'll go here. Takes on c5. I'm going to play bishop to e3. Just going all out right now for the initiative. Actually, if he takes on c5, perhaps I'll just play rook to c1. That looks interesting as well. Okay, but do I want to move the rook off the b-file? If bishop e3, queen a5... All right, I guess I'll go the slow way and trust the fact that I actually have a lot of pieces aiming that way. I feel like that should be helpful. Rook to c1 might have had more concrete threats, but if queen a5, I'm going to play king f2. Getting, my, getting off the diagonal and preparing rook over to c1. This is my idea. And then if I get the rook to c1 and his king hasn't run away, then big trouble, little china for him, right? Ah. Where's the crushing defeat, right? Knight to b5, he trades queens. I guess I'll go rook to b5. And then maybe just double double, I guess. I want to play rook a5 now and hit a7. Hmm. I feel like this is just a bunch of crazy talk for him. Crazy talk, man. Play there. Call his bluff.
Going for the attack. Where's the mate? I don't know how I found that Bishop A5 move. Got it. Defended. Defended. That was a wild, wild affair, honestly. That was what Chess Rivals is all about. Back and forth, trading blows. As, as Tom just said in the chat, chaos. Total chaos. <laughs> wow. Well, we'll take this Chess Rivals home to the bank. Um, we will look for a rematch against Tom Rendell at some point in the coming weeks. We'll give all of you our best wishes and uh, virtual hugs. And we be out. <laughs>